All right, so I just heard back from the company that's shipping our new wheels, and it's looking like it's gonna be iffy whether the wheels will make it here or not by the weekend after this weekend. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to hand mount our mud trains onto our current rims. I'm gonna give our current wheels a bit of a touch up with some spray paint while the, the rubber's off, but uh, I'm gonna take you guys along for the process here. And uh, we're gonna start by uh, mounting just the first wheel. Uh, I gotta break the bead, so that's the first step. I'm gonna start with the front wheel because I'm the most curious about this area. Uh, the spring perch, I think, is the part that has the biggest chance of being like a no-go for the 235-85s. So we'll see. take the valve stem out. So you take the tire off with the face of the wheel up. This is just a solution of uh, hand soap, cheap hand soap and water. Now these tire iron Tire irons will uh, uh, scratch, you know, aluminum alloy uh, wheels. So if you care about your wheels, um, I wouldn't recommend using this method. But as you know, I'm replacing these. Plus, I've already done this before on these wheels. Pinch down one side as much as you can. On the back side. Come up to the front side. So that was a good scoop right there. That just about got me all the way. Yep, there we go, popped. Now you're basically doing the same thing to the rear, but you're trying to pull it out this way. That's what you do. So you get it, get it started here. Just like that. And then you do the same thing. You just try to walk it up and out, getting as little gains wherever you can.
good good run of it. Another tug here, I think it'll come out. There we go. That's how you do it. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna miss these stock wheels that are spray painted or not. The beauty of them is that you can just touch them up with spray paint. And uh Dad, why did you paint it teal? Teal? You want teal wheels? Yeah. That'd be pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Evan loves teal, right? Yeah. You want a teal car when you get older? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dad, make do that video. Show it to mommy. Okay, I'm doing it for our YouTube channel. Not perfect by any stretch, but from a distance, you look acceptable. All right, we're getting closer and closer to the moment of truth here. Let's see if they fit on the car. <laughs> channel yep. awesome. I'm sure they're gonna love that I'm barefoot for this video yeah everyone's gonna be like what are you doing they love it when I use the high left barefoot One side. There you go. <laughs> Hard side. Or the easy side, like yep. I said. Oh. How thick those sidewalls are on that sucker. Yeah, I think the side's gonna be easier somehow. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. I did my pontoon boat spare tra uh, tire a second ago. This side was way harder for some reason. <clears throat> I just about have it. Oh, why did I have to come out to the sensor here? Yeah, bud. There we go. Cool. I saved twenty dollars. <laughs> Remember, we just painted just painted these wheels. Look how scratched up I got them already. Why did you get those scratched? Because I had to. All right, one down, four more to go. Let me go get the tire inflator here. All right. Let's see if we can get the bead to seat here. Okay. And of course, I'll touch up the paint where I scratched it. 
when I get my nice new wheels, I'm gonna have someone mount it for me, but this will let me run these until that time. All right, so that's definitely not seating it that way. Let's see if we can do it this way. Yep, it's, uh, it's seating. All right, here it goes. Whoa, that was loud. Woo! Boy, these definitely have some more rolling resistance, that's for sure. Jeez Louise. So stiff. Oh, moment of truth. Let's see if they fit on the front. Jeez, I'm nervous. looking like it's touching. That's not good. All right, let's see what this looks like. So somewhere I saw that these Yokohamas uh, run a little large. Well, they look awesome, but I don't know if they're gonna fit. I'm gonna lift up the front and see what, what it looks like when I turn it side to side. Ooh. All right, so they rub on the spring perch, but I think if I space them out just a little bit um, that I can get them uh, to spin. And I don't think they're gonna touch on the front side with lock, but on the back side with lock, they might touch the uh, back here. But uh, I think I'm gonna roll with them. I do think I need to order the wheels that I'm looking at. I got the 30 millimeter offset, which might do it. But I'm probably gonna need the 15 millimeter offset. So now I'm gonna take it off the front I'm going to put it on the back, see if it touches anywhere back there. Boy, does it, boy, does it look mean though with them. Holy cow. I'm excited. All right, so my driveway, unfortunately, is on a slant, and I've got both the wheels on the opposite side chalked, but as I jack, I'm still not comfortable with what that jack stand's doing on the front. So I'm going to go ahead and pull down my spare. Um, I plan on throwing one of the extra Duramax tires on my spare anyways, so I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, well I have my spare tire off and all the tires side by side, I thought it'd be cool to kind of look at them and look at the progression. When I first started building my Pilot and we first got it, I was just looking for a uh, all-terrain tire that would be good on the road and uh, we settled with these uh, Kumo Road Ventures. Um, they were good tires, but they wore through pretty quick. Um, yeah, it could have been alignment issues, but we noticed the tread got pretty low pretty fast and in the slick stuff They just didn't quite cut it So next I was looking for a tire that was as aggressive as possible while still keeping the weight down So we settled we settled on these Goodyear Duratrac load C tires and they're about 40 pounds each and They have a uh, pretty good lug separation here on the outside and to be honest, um, they're probably the perfect tire for a pilot if you're looking for off-road performance and a compromise between weight. Um, the sidewalls aren't as thick and that's what allows them to be a little lighter. When you air down, they really squish. Um, I've already noticed with these new low D tires that um, they're very low PSI right now. I haven't measured them, but the squish factor is just really not there with the pilot. Um, they're rated to carry just tons of weight. Uh, but yeah, these Duratracs did a great job. Um, we got four years out of them, and that was 
with a uh, pretty bad alignment in the rear at times. Um, I have a lifetime alignment at Firestone and I do take advantage of it as much as possible. But um, up till recently, the shop I would go to uh, was kind of far from home and they didn't do a very good job scheduling me. They missed appointments and it just wasn't great. Uh, they built a new shop and I love it and um, I can go there. I don't even have to make an appointment and they get my car done pretty quick. Um, but that leads me to these new tires here which are 50 pounds each and by far the most aggressive of them of course because they're mud trains and I am really eager to see if I can get them to fit. Um, like I said earlier they hit the spring perch but barely. I can actually rotate the wheel by hand so I'm gonna start with spacers. Um, I debated whether I could either notch the spring perch here or uh, dent it, but I mean, I could just take an angle grinder and notch it right here. I'm sure the strength of the metal would retain itself. I don't think I'd be compromising it too much. Uh, but for right now, we're gonna go with spacers first. The front doesn't seem to rub. Of course, you know, there's, I can just trim some of this plastic if it's in the way. In the back, it does hit here, and it, it's probably when I have weight on it gonna hit somewhere maybe right here. Um, might be able to cut and grind a little bit, uh, but we'll see. Um, if I can turn pretty far without it, you know, turn pretty well without it rubbing, then we'll probably just roll with it for the added clearance and the massive tires. They definitely make a huge difference in um, the height the vehicle sits off the ground and um, the aggressive look of the vehicle. So I'm pretty excited. These bad boys haven't been on the car in a while. You guys know I spent I store my spare uh, deflated underneath, and I was curious if during my off-road adventures I had uh, de-beaded it or uh, you know if dirt was gonna get in there and cause leaks, but so far no leaks, which is good. Now on the front, I would say this jack was like within a half inch of not having enough height for the tire, for my new tires. And actually, now that I think about it, my new tires aren't even fully aired up. So um, it's possible that I might need to get a jack spacer for this thing, which is kind of exciting because that clearly shows an increase in um, ground clearance. That's awesome. You guys know on these pilots, ground clearance is a uh, hard fought war. Lots of compromises have to be made and even to get, you know, a two or three inch lift takes a good bit of investment. All right, let's see if we have it up high enough to get it on. Ugh. Looks like we got plenty, got it up plenty high on this end, so that's good. Most of you know also that I have a leak in my airbags. So right now my pilot is not sitting at its max height, but I think it fits in. It's got, uh, you know, about a, a, a hand's width of, of space on the front. Pretty close to that on the back, so I guess it's a little bit more centered than I thought, but the question is, if I put spacers on it and this thing gets compressed, will it rub the top? That's the question. But so far, I think it's gonna be worth the battle to get the get that uh, bigger tire on there. It's definitely gonna look pretty mean with the new wheels I'm picking. Uh, all that's left to do before my trip to Florida is uh, fabricate a front bumper, mount all the rest of the tires, go get them balanced, get the car aligned, uh, put on the spacers, cross my fingers that it's enough, uh, polish the headlights. I've got a couple other uh, mods. Oh, the transmission temperature gauge. I got to figure out where I'm going to put that in the dash. So I'm going to try to make videos of all that stuff. So stay tuned. I got lots of content coming. And uh, if you guys didn't already see it, I've got some merchandise on my Patreon page. Um, I decided to go through Patreon for my merchandise because they actually do the shipping and they handle uh, everything involved with the logistics. Uh, right now my life with the family and kids is pretty hectic. 
So uh, I know it'd be more convenient if I had a store right now um, and I'll look into an option like that in the future. But for right now, if you'd consider uh, investing uh, in this channel with the Patreon account, that'd be awesome. You do have to make uh, be subscribed for three months before you get the merchandise items. On the two higher tiers, you get uh, an item every three months. So on the lowest one, I think it's just the sticker or the one with the sticker, uh, you get that after three months. And then on the other ones, every three months, you'll get a new uh, product. Uh, the highest tier one ends up uh, giving you um, three shirts. Um, and uh, they are all the same design. They're different colors. Uh, some are long sleeve and short sleeve. I might change the design here soon. I've got some really good ideas. I found uh, some pretty funny stuff. Um, or not funny. I found some pretty cool stuff that I would wear on my shirt. So um, again, if you guys have any feedback, I really appreciate hearing it in the comments below. And uh, yeah, um, wish me luck getting these tires to actually roll. <laughs> I'll see you guys later.